This short film has been made possible because of viewer support. Please consider supporting The Christian Truther by going to christiantruther.com forward slash info. All American mass media has to do is to unplug their bananas from their ears. Good evening, friends, visitors, Bostonians, Democrats, communists, revolutionaries. Communism is a virus. The political ideology is not contained to any race or creed. Rather, it can infect anyone, any individual, through mass subliminal brainwashing. On short terms, communist political rule is obtained through fear, control, and murder. On longer terms, it is obtained by invading the subconscious of innocent minds and can take decades before full and complete control of a populace takes place. Rather than by force, the last free nation on earth is being subdued by a political ideology once thought defeated. But in reality, communism is alive and well within the United States of America. Concerned citizens of the old guard of the United States were watchful and warned of such a thing. But still, today, communism is running rampant throughout schools, homes, campuses, businesses, hospitals, local governments, and the federal government. The war against the United States did not take days, weeks, months, or even years, but rather decades upon decades. 
while Marxism, Leninism, and Stalinism are all overt communistic political ideologies, the effort against the United States is covert. It's subliminal, and it's almost complete. A document purportedly obtained in Germany in 1919 details a takeover of the United States, one that would not happen overnight, but one that required each generation to be on guard. But as time went on and distractions crept in, so did they. The individuals who hate freedom, who hate justice, who hate America, and who hate the land of the free and the home of the brave. It has been said that one could not overtly invade the United States because there is a rifle behind every blade of grass. Each citizen willing to fight for each other, each citizen willing to fight for their land, takes a certain type of patriotism and such a patriotism has been covertly subdued. The very nature of what is taking place in the United States cannot be totally called communism, because it combines different types of political ideologies into one, but it can be summed up into one goal, divide and conquer. Over time, the eroding of American patriotism has led to democratic socialism, socialism, and now communism. After all, the goal of socialism, according to Vladimir Lenin, the goal of socialism is communism. During the 20th century, Communism will be remembered as the mass murderer, and America will be remembered as the nation that played a large role in ridding the world of communism. However, during the 21st century, communism will be remembered as the force that drove America to the brink, and communism will be remembered as the new freedom. Our country is being destroyed by tyranny, and tyranny doesn't always come in the form of government rule. Rather, it can come in the form of education, social justice, media, technology, culture, science, and business. Take a look around today. Have a glance at the evening news, scroll your Facebook page, check your Twitter, turn on the radio, look at your church, and see clearly that the hammer and sickle have returned. Now let's go back, way back, to 1963 and see what was entered into congressional record by Congressman Albert S. Herlong, Jr. of Florida, and see if this doesn't depict exactly what's going on today. Number 1. The U.S. should accept coexistence as the only alternative to atomic war. Number two, the U.S. should be willing to capitulate in preference to engaging in atomic war. Number three, develop the illusion that total disarmament by the U.S. would be a demonstration of moral strength. Number four, permit free trade between all nations, regardless of communist affiliation and regardless of whether or not items could be used for war. Number five, extend long-term loans to Russia and Soviet satellites. Number six, provide American aid to all nations regardless of communist domination. Number seven, grant recognition of Red China and admission of Red China to the United Nations. Number eight, set up East and West Germany as separate states in spite of Khrushchev's promise in 1955 to settle the Germany question by free elections under the supervision of the UN. Number nine, prolong the conferences to ban atomic tests because the U.S. has agreed to suspend tests as long as negotiations are in progress. Number ten, allow all Soviet satellites individual representation in the United Nations. Number eleven, promote the UN as the only hope for mankind. If its charter is rewritten, demand that it be set up as a one world government with its own independent armed forces. Number 12. Resist any attempt to outlaw the Communist Party. Number 13. Do away with loyalty oaths. Number 14. Continue giving Russia access to the U.S. Patent Office. Number 15. Capture one or both of the political parties in the U.S. Number 16. Use technical decisions of the courts to weaken basic American institutions by claiming their activities violate civil rights. Number 17. Get control of the schools. Use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communism propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of teachers' associations. Put the party line in textbooks. Number 18. Get control of all student newspapers. Number 19. Use student riots to foment public protests against programs or organizations that are under communist attack. Number 20. Infiltrate the press. Get control of book review assignments, editorial writing, policy-making positions. 
Number 21, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Number 22, continue discrediting American culture by degrading all form of artistic expression. An American communist cell was told to eliminate all good sculpture from parks and buildings, substituting shapeless, awkward, and meaningless forms. Number 23, control art critics and directors of art museums. Our plan is to promote ugliness, repulsive, meaningless art. Number 24, eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and a violation of free speech and free press. Number 25, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Number 26, Present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Number 27, infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. Number 28, eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools on the grounds that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Number 29. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Number 30. Discredit the American Founding Fathers, present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. Number 31. Belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history on the ground that it was only a minor part of the big picture. Give more emphasis to Russian history since the communists took over. Number 32. Support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health clinics, etc. Number 33. Eliminate all laws or procedures which interfere with the operation of the communist apparatus. Number 34. Eliminate the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Number 35. Discredit and eventually dismantle the FBI. Number 36. Infiltrate and gain control of more unions. Number 37. Infiltrate and gain control of big business. Number 38. Transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agencies. Treat all behavioral problems as psychiatric disorders which no one but psychiatrists can understand or treat. Number 39. Dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. Number 40. Discredit the family as an institution. Encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. Number 41. Emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Attribute prejudices, mental blocks, and retarding of children to suppressive influence of parents. Number 42. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition, that students and special interest groups should rise up and make a united force to solve economic, political, or social problems. Number 43. Overthrow all colonial governments before native populations are ready for self-government. Number 44. Internationalize the Panama Canal. Number 45. Repeal the Connolly Reservation so the U.S. cannot prevent the world court from seizing jurisdiction over domestic problems. Give the world court jurisdiction over domestic problems. Give the world court jurisdiction over nations and individuals alike. Regardless of the reality that the Soviet Union is no longer in existence, one cannot simply deny the reality that these goals are being accomplished today by an unseen large organization that is determined to overthrow America. Several events have taken place to bring America to this point, but as one may notice, not every goal on that list is complete. But one cannot deny that that unseen force hell-bent on world dominance, is actively working to bring that list to completion, which will end in a one-world government. How did America get here? From the words of Yuri Bezmenov, demoralization is a fundamental part of their agenda. Demoralization takes decades. 
It is not something that happens overnight, but rather it can take 15 to 20 years for one generation to be fully submissive to the communist agenda. Demoralization, it takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who've been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously, they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Yes. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck. With, with demoralization and unless even if, if you start right now here this minute you start educating new generation of Americans it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism so just how close is this unseen force to global control
A long-held conspiracy theory yet again gets proven true. The United Nations at the 71st regular session has aggregated the role of the United Nations in promoting a new global human order into their agenda. In addition to the aforementioned, under Section A, titled Promotion of Sustained Economic Growth and Sustainable Development, in accordance with the relevant resolutions of the General Assembly and recent United Nations conferences, is also the plan for total globalization and interdependence. Under the allocation of agenda items resides the declaration of a formation of a new global human order, adopted by the General Assembly at its second plenary meeting on September 16, 2016. The official adoption of such ideology brings to light the global conspiracy against humanity to form a new world order, as mentioned by world leaders and select government officials. Contained within the Global Sustainable Development Goals, or Global Goals, is the practical declaration of war against the common man. Conceived originally on November 29, 2000, and adopted by the General Assembly at the 74th Plenary Meeting, is the role of the United Nations in promoting a new global human order. This resolution has just been crafted back into the global agenda for the United Nations on the 16th of September, 2016. A well-known communist got his ideas passed into the UN General Assembly and they were just reinforced in 2016. Chennai Jagan, the fourth president of Guyana, was a known communist who created the proposal for a new global human order that was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on November 14, 2002. Chennai Jagan's communist past. Winston Churchill was alarmed by Jagan's unabashed Marxism and Leninism and was convinced Jagan could allow the Soviet Union a foothold in Latin America. There was strong behind-the-scenes pressure from the U.S. and the CIA asserted that he had ties to the Soviet Union. This prompted a British military intervention only days after his election. Jagan resigned as chief minister after 133 days. Jagan's vision for a new global human order. Inspired by a vision of the enormous potential for human development created by the end of the Cold War, the accelerated rate of technological development and the deepening interdependence of nations, the late President Dr. Chet I. Jagan urged that states should now grasp the opportunity to build an enlightened international partnership based on mutual respect, democratic governance, popular participation, and equal opportunity for all peoples to live in peace and prosperity. At the heart of the proposal is the eradication of poverty and overall human development. Essential to its success is the political will to address these challenges by identifying new and innovative ways of financing development and by mobilizing all actors on the domestic and international stage in support of this cause. Towards an anti-communist antithesis, I give you the would-be president, the people, Caribbean people's hero, Dr. Chedi Jagger. Governor Chairman, friends all, three decades separate the landing of troops in British Guiana in 1953 and in Grenada in 1983. In the former, the soldiers were British. In the latter, American. But common to both events and many others was anti-communism. Anti-communism, as we know, raised its head immediately after that great event in history, the great October Socialist Revolution. We had it manifested in this country with the Palmer raids, and of course after the Second World War, when socialism became a world system, with uh, socialist countries in North Korea, in South Korea, in North Korea and North Vietnam, and Eastern Europe establishing people's democracies. It is in this context of a change in the balance of world forces that imperialism said, halt, enough, we must stop you. And it is in this context that the Cold War was started by the arch-imperialist Churchill, whose government sent the troops to Guyana in 1953. 
But before that, he had come to Fulton, Missouri in 1946 and really sounded the clarion call anti-communist and the declaration of the Cold War. A year after, President Truman declared the Cold War. And in a speech at Baylor University on March the 6th, he made a speech on foreign economic policy, which clearly stated that governments which conducted planned economies and controlled foreign trade were dangerous to freedom, that freedom of speech and worship were dependent on the free enterprise system. He pointed out that controlled economies were not the American way and not the way of peace. He urged that the whole world should adopt the American system and that the American system could survive in America only if it became a world system. Calling for action, he implored, quote, unless we act and act decisively, it, that meaning, meaning government-controlled economy and government-controlled foreign trade will be the pattern of the next century, unquote. Requesting aid for Greece and Turkey, which the bankrupt government, British government was handing over to the Americans, Truman attacked the communists as a militant minority for creating political chaos and urged that if the United States were to realize its objectives, it must be willing to help free peoples to maintain their free institutions and their national integrity against aggressive movements that seek to impose upon them totalitarian regimes, I quote, unquote. To make the American free enterprise capitalist system into a world system, a global strategy, military, political, economic, diplomatic, and psychological was devised. An iron ring of military bases was established under treaties for different regions of the world. The Rio Treaty for Latin America and the Caribbean, NATO for the North Atlantic, the Baghdad Pact, later called CENTO after the Baghdad, um, the Baghdad, the Iraq Revolution of 1958, that for the Middle East, Seattle, and the Anzus Pact for the Far East. All this meant to contain communism, to roll back socialism, and arrest national liberation worldwide. And the methods used were direct military intervention, as in Guyana in 1953, as in the Dominican Republic in 1965, and later in Vietnam. Indirect intervention, as in Guatemala, in 1954, and later, indirect intervention against Cuba with the Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. And then there was a familiar destabilization, what was called destabilization, by the CIA, covert action. They started out against the Mossadegh government in 1953, sorry, 1951, 53, in June, a few months after, Again, a, few, a, a year after in um, Guatemala and then in Chile in 1973 um, and against the Manly government in 1980. So these were some of the methods which were used. But what happened in British Guiana, Iran, Guatemala, elsewhere were not isolated events. They coincided with the people with the, with the period of intense McCarthyism inside the United States. Under Senator Joseph McCarthy's Red with Hunting Un American Activities Committee, American patriots, politicians, administrators, journalists, writers, actors, including the learned black scholar Dr. W. E. B. Dubois and the famous actor singer Paul Robeson, were hounded, blacklisted and some were jailed. The Eisenhower and Kennedy administrations initiated US involvement in Vietnam. 
and President Kennedy gave the green light for the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba and CIA destabilization of our third PPP government in Guyana in the 1961-64 to 64 period. Under President Johnson, the Johnson Doctrine, the U.S. government, after the armed intervention in the Dominican Republic with 42,000 troops, assumed the right to intervene in any Latin American country which it considered was threatened by communism. Under Nixon's Vietnamization policy, after the fiasco there, Asians, Africans, and Latin Americans were to become the instruments of their own subjugation. It was significant that President Nixon praised lavish praise, heap lavish praise on the Brazilian dictatorship after the official visit of the Brazilian president to Washington, declaring, quote, as Brazil goes, so goes the rest of Latin America. We have also that same policy leading to the destabilization of the Allende government. And thereafter, we find that not only communists and Marxists were hit by this anti-communist hysteria. Also caught up were nationalists like João Goulart of Brazil, whose government was thrown out in 1964. Even an anti-communist but nationalist, Mohammed Mossadegh of Iran, who had nationalized the Anglo-Iranian oil company in 1951. The revolutionary democratic Juan Bosch of the Dominican Republic and the social democratic not Michael Manley of Jamaica. So here we have to see the consequences of this anti-communist hysteria attacking people who were not necessarily Marxist, but who wanted change, change, especially in the area of Latin America, Asia, and Africa, and the Caribbean. But not only was there military aggression, direct and indirect, but there was also economic aggression, ideological warfare, and political aggression. In the economic arena, all kinds of methods were used. Economic blockade, aid with strings, the curtailment of cutoff of credits, the denial of essential machinery and spare parts, and the imposition of economic planning strategies designed to perpetuate the status of dependency under dependent capitalism. And here we have the export of models immediately after the war and the Truman Doctrine, what is called the Puerto Rican model. And then came later the Alliance for Progress after the Cuban Revolution, the ECLA model by the Economic Commission of, of Latin America, then the regional integration system and equal partnership, that is joint enterprises. All these were exported to so-called third world countries in order to contain these countries within the system of dependent capitalism in keeping with the economic philosophy of the Truman Doctrine. Then you had the Marshall Plan, by the way, which came in immediately after the war for devastated Europe. UNRWA was sabotaged, which was an aid a scheme by the United Nations to give unconditional aid to those countries which had suffered in Europe. And because it was felt the socialist countries will benefit most from that, that was sabotaged. The Marshall Plan took its place, and governments, three of them, in France, Italy, and Belgium, which had united front governments, which communist and left socialist, representing the underground resistance during Hitler occupation, those were destroyed on the ground that if they, had, if they wanted Marshall aid, they have to kick out the communists and the left socialists. So that was the influence in Europe. In the third world, so-called third world, through the IMF and the World Bank, these in international monetary institutions were subverted to serve imperialist interests and to foster in the third world the system of dependent capitalism, which has got all these countries today in serious trouble manifested by the debt crisis. This is only one aspect that the United Nations is being used to foment a new world order. As for the takeover of America, it is pretty obvious as to what's going on around us. Those 45 communist goals 
are being fulfilled right now. They've been being fulfilled for many years. And all we have to do to understand what's actually going on, in the words of Yuri Bezmenov, all we have to do is unplug the bananas from our ears and open our eyes. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this short film. Please take a moment and share this video. Awaken your friends. Awaken your family. We must fight back. Stay informed by going to ChristianTruther.com. God bless and carry on.